Happy New Year to all our subscribers. And welcome to 2021's first episode of What's Crap on WhatsApp. We're the voice note show that investigates the crap in your WhatsApp groups. I'm Paul McNally from Podcasting Company Volume. And I'm Kate Wilkinson from Africa Check, the continent's leading fact-checking organization. It's a new year and we have a new bunch of crap to debunk. Is cactus juice a cure for snake bites and scorpion stings? Did a COVID-19 vaccine in Australia cause false positive HIV test results? And again, is COVID-19 caused by 5G? Let's find out. So what's first on our list of 2021 crap, Kate? A post shared widely on Facebook says that cactus juice can be used as an anti-poison for a snake bite or a scorpion sting. It says to firstly tighten the next joint of the victim's body to avoid overspreading, then make some razor cuts in about four inches distance to the bite spot and apply cactus juice. Now, I'm not a doctor, but that does not sound right. Yeah, snake bites can be dangerous and even deadly. Their symptoms vary, but they can include severe paralysis, difficulty breathing, bleeding, and kidney failure. Professor Timothy Hardcastle, co-chair of South Africa's National Snake Bite Advisory Group, advised against the treatment in the Facebook post. He says there is no medical proof that any home remedies or traditional medicines are effective against snake bites. He also warned that using a device to apply pressure to a limb can lead to a person losing that limb. It's important to act quickly if you are bitten by a snake. Dr. Jenna Taylor, head of the clinical unit in the Department of Anesthesia at the Nkosi Albert Latuli Central Hospital in Durban, told Africa Check. She says you should rather seek urgent medical attention and not waste time on home remedies or even an attempt to kill the snake. What's the treatment for a snake bite though, Kate? The main treatment for a poisonous snake bite is antivenom, according to the World Health Organization. The treatment works by boosting the immune system to fight off the poison. The types of antivenom used depends on the species of snake. The health agency recommends the following steps when a person is bitten by a snake. Move the person away from the snake to avoid another attack. Seek medical attention immediately. Remove any tight clothing around the bite wound. You can also give the person a paracetamol if they're in pain. Monitor the person's breathing. But the post also mentions scorpion stings. What do we do with them? An adult may not need medical care if they are stung by a scorpion. But if a child is stung, the wound should be cleaned and an ice pack should be applied. The child can be given pain medication while medical attention is sought. So this claim is crap then? It's dangerous crap. Don't apply cactus juice to snake bites. Get help. Next on our list is a screenshot of a Business Insider article shared on social media. It says Australia abandons vaccine attempt after the shot wrongly gave some people positive HIV test results. That's crazy. It also says Australia became the first country to abandon their vaccine project and shows a photo of Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison. Okay, is this true? So the headline is actually from a Real Business Insider article, which was published on the 11th of December 2020. The article says Australia has become the first country in the world to scrap a coronavirus vaccine project after a shot developed as part of the 750 million dollar scheme saw trial participants falsely test positive for HIV. Yeah, and it quotes Australian Health Minister Greg Hunt as saying the trial vaccine triggered an antibody response that could interfere with HIV screening. This news was also reported by the BBC explaining that vaccine trial participants' health status had not changed. So the vaccine just made it appear that they had tested positive for HIV. I mean, who developed this vaccine? The vaccine was developed by biotech company CSL and Australia's University of Queensland. They stressed that the positive results were false, meaning that the trial participants' health was not at risk. This meant that the Australian government has now entered an agreement for the Novavax vaccine and upped its existing order of the Oxford or AstraZeneca vaccine, the BBC said. In a statement, CSL said the trial participants were fully informed of the possibility of a partial immune response to this component. They also said that it was unexpected that the levels induced would interfere with certain HIV tests, but there is no possibility the vaccine causes infection. The routine follow-up tests confirmed there is no HIV virus present. Wow. Okay, so this one is not crap. No, it's true. 
Our last message is to check one we've seen before, the claim that 5G is making people sick. Yeah, it's been doing the rounds for a while and it just keeps popping up. This one is written in a mixture of Isi Zulu and English. It begins. Ayiko yi coronavirus, abantu kati beyenza yi research, abantu babulalwa yi 5G technology. This translates as there is no coronavirus. People have done research and people are dying from 5G technology. The original post has been widely shared in South Africa as a screenshot, which has been viewed more than 312,000 times. Now, Kate, remind me again about 5G. Africa Check has published a fact sheet on 5G technology. In it, we explain that 5G is the fifth generation of wireless mobile technology. It is made up of a set of instructions for devices, which tells them how to share information and the technology that allows them to do so. 5G is faster than the previous iteration, 4G, and allows more devices to be connected to a network at once. The data is transmitted through radio frequency waves. These waves release non-ionizing radiation. So this is radiation that does not damage the DNA in cells. Yeah, and there is no strong evidence that the radio frequency waves from cell phone towers have any effect on health. The International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection has said that no effects of radio frequency, the induction or development of cancer have been substantiated. And there is no evidence of adverse health effects at exposure levels below international guidelines. COVID-19 is spread through inhaling infected droplets that are released when an infected person coughs, sneezes or speaks. It can also be spread through touching a surface where those droplets have landed and then touching your eyes, nose or mouth. It is not spread through cellular networks. The World Health Organization has stated viruses cannot travel on radio waves or mobile networks. And COVID-19 has spread in countries that do not have 5G networks. India, Zimbabwe, Colombia, for example, have not yet rolled out 5G networks but they have all experienced significant COVID-19 outbreaks. The Nigerian federal government has previously debunked claims that the country's outbreak is linked to 5G, saying that no license has been issued for the deployment of the network in the country. And Eswatini, which has had more than 10,000 confirmed cases, has no 5G network, and they have also debunked these claims. So, this zombie claim is crap then? Still crap. Viral messages claiming that COVID-19 does not exist and that 5G networks are actually making people sick, are baseless and unfounded. Don't share them. That's all the time we have for 2021's first show. Now you know what's crap and what's not. Your friends and family can sign up for the show over WhatsApp. The number is 082-709-3527. Make sure to save us as a contact in your phone and then send us a message to confirm. You can find the show wherever you get your podcasts, from Apple to Spotify. If you listen there, you'll find show notes and a link to the fact checks. Remember that you can send us messages that you want fact checked. It could be a picture, a video, a link, or even a voice note. Just forward them to us on WhatsApp. Our theme song is composed by John Bartman. I'm Kate Wilkinson. And I'm Paul McNally. Bye for now. Volume.